morning. And you're very welcome to Welcoming Miracles. <laughs> and my name is Sarah Sinclair, and this is the very wonderful Suzanne Sullivan, who has come to join me by the fire this morning, just in this very gentle and reverent atmosphere, to answer some of the questions we've been sent in by you. Mm. So thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you. I just, I was just saying, uh, there's such a calmness in the house today and uh, just sitting back in my chair in my room meditating and mm -hmm. just feeling like this this vibe of reverence and devotion and and that's really what the questions are about that are mm -hmm. coming in mm -hmm. like the how to get to live a life of devotion yeah maybe I'll just so that the just mm -hmm. read it out to you here just exactly as it came okay so I've been studying A Course in Miracles for many years now, and I consider myself a devoted student of the Course. I have friends who seem to be on different spiritual paths, and they often go to visit ashrams, and sometimes I find myself a little jealous mm. when they share about their experiences at those ashrams. And sometimes I wish there was such a place where A Course in Miracles students could go for an experience of silence and mm. devotion, mm. even if it's only for a short while, because it can get challenging in terms of silence living in a city and having a job and a family. You know, is there such a place? So <laughs> this is like perfect. Well, of course, ultimately that place is within. Mm. And, um, and I know for myself, and I, I really only can speak from my experience, which I'm so grateful to be able to do. Mm because these questions do come in and I had all of these questions mm -hmm. you know, years and years of questions <laughs> and so to get to that place to where you know the monastery is within in fact David has a book yeah he's out. always saying that yeah this moment is your monastery this he's moment always is saying your monastery, yeah. so stay tuned <laughs> for that book but um, to get to that point it does seem like a process doesn't it and um, I know for myself I wanted to do it by myself. I wanted to be able to just meditate and be and not really have a lot of people around. Um, I felt very drawn to this silence, but what I was finding was that it was I was looking for the form silence, right? So, and that all can be used, and it was, because I was drawn to live uh, 10 miles down a dirt road in the middle of nowhere with my course book. And, um, and really that was just a symbol of my sincerity. Um, that was a symbol of the heart's call to go deeper into what the Course of Miracles is pointing us to. And so I had uh, a lot of resistance to listening to other teachers or listening to teachers at all and uh, and joining groups and things like that. And I was one of those, this is a self-study. Mm -hmm. And of course, many of us can relate to that. Uh, this is a self-study, I don't need to do anything. And so um, what happened for me was I went as far as I could go on my own and then I heard that call to go deeper. And I was also very drawn to, like, in my mind, of the, the symbols of ashrams and India. I went to India a few times, and I went to an a, a Indian guru, and in, in, I went to see Sai Baba, you know, Mother Mira in Germany. Mm. And, um, and they were all very beautiful experiences, you know. But uh, when that, you know, it would be like momentary feelings of hitting that place of, devotion and, and, and peace, you know, but there wasn't a consistency at all. And so um, about this self-study, it's like, well, the mind, it's all mind. It's all self-study. And I guess what I came to realize is that what was coming towards me, what was obvious was what my next step was to deepen. And they're just symbols, right? They're just form symbols that are helpful. To take the mind deeper. Um, when I hear, you know, people say, "Why do you live in community?" and this and that, it's like, well, it's what was offered by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So for me to say, "Oh, it's a self-study, and I'm going to do this on my own," that wasn't working anymore, and I wasn't happy. 
I mean, consistently I wasn't happy. So, you know, if I had been, great. And there are many, many paths, you know. Yeah. But the many, many paths thing really is is to, you know, we always say, I want to hear the Holy Spirit. I want to hear the Holy Spirit, my internal teacher. And I do believe that we're hearing it all the time. But there's like some sort of resistance to the light. There's a resistance to actually going very deeply into the release of that self-concept, you know, because it means safety in the mind that's deceived. It feels like it's safety when, in actuality, it's keeping us in this kind of mediocre existence of being a human on planet Earth, right? So these ideas of ashrams and places, and um, it's like they're, they're popping up in the mind for a reason, I believe. If it's happening for you, and it's like, how do I go deeper? And this is the question that, that we're addressing. Uh, there are many, many ways. And so what happened for me was uh, community came. And I wasn't at all happy about that. I, I really felt like, no, 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 no. Not that. <laughs> Not that, you know, and but you know, and of course, it, it, it's all over the place about you can't go home without your brother, and that a course in miracles is actually, it is a, a, a an awakening path through the marrying of relationships, mm -hmm. through having relationships. Your way will be different. I will give you a relationship, a holy relationship. Mm -hmm. So. As much as I went for the hours and hours of meditation, and I'm sure it was preparing my mind, I, I negate no steps that I've taken. Uh, I, I've taken many in this seeming quest for for uh, awakening. So I really feel like it's what is coming into your awareness as that prayer is going on in your heart. And of course, here at the Living Miracles community we don't even see it truly as a community mm. in form. Um, when I met David and the teachings were so clear and so non-compromising, I felt like, wow, a way shower, an actual modern day way shower of how to do this. And he's talking about now. He's not talking about in lifetimes. And so that got my attention. And so as I went deeper into it, all of a sudden people started showing up. Right? But they started showing up completely different than in the past. They showed up in purpose, a shared purpose. That's the holy relationship. It's a shared purpose of awakening. It's a shared purpose of practicing forgiveness with each other. And so as they came and as it looked like, okay, it looks like community, then I started to accept. And the more and more and more I accepted what the, the Holy Spirit's offering, right? It's like the mind thinks it has its ideas of what it needs. Mm. It has no clue. I mean, I can honestly say I had no clue. Now, I thought I had a clue. I thought I had lots of clues, right? I thought I knew. And so there was a spiritual self-concept also that was mm. getting, mm. really getting taken to task. And that probably was one of the hardest ones to give up. But um, yeah, so when we, talk about community, we really talk about a container in the mind that's ready to go deeper. And we really don't start out in community. It's like there are, seems like there are many, many steps before that because the intensity can, the mind has to be prepared for, and that's why it's like a highly, a highly individualized curriculum is given, a highly individual steps are given to people. And so I love these questions because it's a, it's a symbol of the mind saying, I want God, you know, I really want an authentic experience. And I know for myself, and many others probably can relate to this, that there, you know, the Course has two phases. There's the phase of, oh, there's miracles, and I'm not a body, I'm, not, I'm free, and awakening, and all of that stuff. And I so loved it when I found it because it, it lit my heart up. But then it's like, it's kind of like a, all of a sudden you realize what it's really saying. And then you drop into the dismantling phase. And the dismantling phase is where most people go, whoa, <laughs> you know, enough of that. And so I feel like community, which we have a community. I mean, and it is like an ashram uh, for A Course in Miracles students. Um, because when you go to a traditional ashram, um, and there perhaps is a guru or something, you're learning their teachings, you're practicing meditation, whatever. Here, it's solely devoted mm. 
to awakening, the Course of Miracles is the foundational piece and the deep teachings of David and messengers and just all the things that we've walked through ourselves, mm -hmm. which we want demonstrations, right? We want to be able to sit down and say, did you experience this extreme confusion? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Instead of somebody who hasn't walked through it, who says, oh, well, if you're confused, then that can't be the Holy Spirit, you know? And it's like, yeah, well, of course the Holy Spirit is not confused, but I am confused while I am still identified with the false belief system of being a person in the world. Mm. And this is deep. So these ashrams and monasteries, and in fact, you know, I was thinking about the monastery. We have a, a, the only that I know of, A Course in Miracles-based monastery in the world. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know, how that came to be. And the word monastery, it's like, it's a symbol. And the monastery was the deepest, meaning, most meaningful word yeah. that we could come up with for complete devotion of the heart. Like, I'm going for this 100%. It's like the mystical branch of A Course in Miracles, right? And it feels so beautiful because we've all come together in this in this collaborative venture, which mm. Jesus says in the Course, which I ignored for many years, that it's a collaborative event, uh, adventure, yes. Yeah, it is an adventure. <laughs> adventure. And yeah, so to come together in this way with that kind of symbology around us is really, it's like it, it, it just, it like shows that how much the Spirit loves us. That's how I feel. It's like, I will give you this. I will give you this. I will give you this. Just keep turning towards me. You don't have to worry about the means. I will give you all the means. I am the means, mm -hmm. right? And then in form, I'll give you whatever you need. And we often joke around here because everything is very, very nice, right? It's mm -hmm. very nice. And we joke like, like we've done the cave thing probably like <laughs> right, after yeah. a lifetime. And, and now we're really serious, like we really want to let go of everything. And then all of a sudden there's this, all this stuff that as the mind crashes through the levels of fear and the things that need to be uh, released, it's almost like the warm blanket is around us, mm -hmm. you know. And the monastery and the centers, we have centers all over the world. We have one in Australia, in Europe, in Mexico, and um, and here in Utah we have the center which we're in right now. But I've spent a lot of time at the monastery, mm -hmm. as you have, as mm -hmm. many of us have, and what a gift it is, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to to sink into that vibe of an ashram, which is at all of the centers, because at the heart of an ashram is devotion. Right, and actually I've just heard the tweak in the mind, what's the difference between a retreat, just a regular retreat, of course, a miracles retreat that people may have been on, and coming to one of our centers, which are devotional centers for a retreat, like the going deeper one, say it after Easter um, right, next year. Right. It's, it is the container, and that's what an ashram feel is as well. It's a pure 24-7 experience of devotion. Yeah. It's not like you have some classes, right. and then you go and you turn your cell phone yeah. on, and, and you, you, yeah. you think you about other things. Life. You go back to life, or you do whatever you feel like, you know, after four. Or mm -hmm. It's not like that. It really, you do, feel, and that's, a monastery is the only way to describe that yeah. kind of feeling. Yeah, it's that kind of devotion that, that you want it to consume your heart. You want to to put yourself so fully into it that it's there are no outside distractions. Now what happens is, you know, we, we seemingly go into these devotional times and people come and they stay with us for different periods mm. of time from two weeks to six months, mm. say, and they immerse the mind. But they, it, what's cool about it is that you, you let go of all the seeming distractions in the world and then you don't have anything keeping you from seeing what you're truly believing in and so it can get very like up close and so we have projects that we immerse the mind in to lift it higher and higher and higher so as these concepts are being blasted mm -hmm. by the light really the light is just being allowed in and we're allowing this uh, these false identities to, to, to pass through so that we can see that we are truly in alignment with the truth of who we are, the light in our mind, the Holy Spirit, you know, we start to merge with that. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to have places to go to is very, it's, it's very symbolic of the Spirit saying, of course, you know, if you say that you only want the peace of God, 
then there are lots of entry points, mm -hmm. lots of entry points. And so I would say like somebody like who's writing here about this feeling of being drawn to uh, an ashram and is there something that is uh, a Course of Miracles base that is mm. going to support your path, yes there is. Yes, and there service is. is such a big part of ashrams too, isn't it? The service, devotional yeah. service is such an aspect. And I can see why. Mm. Because as I was crashing through a lot of things, if I didn't have my function and my tasks, I mean it helped it helped bring the mind to a place where it could feel that synergy of being absorbed into something brand new and letting go of the fear and seeing the faults, mm. you know, seeing the falseness of fear itself. It's like we're undoing fear here, you know mm. what I mean? It's not that it's real and we have to overcome it, we have to face it so that we can see that it can dissolve in the light and the truth of who we are, which mm. is just, you know, it's so good. You know, I mean, it might feel a little rough going through, but... <laughs> well, one of the things that I love that you said was you were talking about, like, the, the desire to be very devotional that you had tried in your own life. You, you've gone and done it for us all. You had those ideal type of conditions. You had the people put away far from you. You had the space, and you found it wasn't enough. So mm -hmm. now the Spirit introduces people in purpose, and that mm -hmm. makes them practical, mm -hmm. because you can just use them for healing. Mm -hmm. And it's not like... Like yeah. you said, a traditional community vibe, which is all lots of bodies together. That's not that's not the feeling. No, no, no. it's a, it's definitely a devotional purpose, and that's the only thing that brings us together is a devotional purpose. There's no hanging out here. Mm -hmm. There's no joining a spiritual community. Nobody joins our community. We're not even join. You know, it's a community of the mind. It's a community of the mind and it looks how it looks which is supportive and helpful and it feels like there's like something like uh, one time uh, this guy said to me that came to the monastery he said i can't count on anything i can't count on relationships i can't count on this place i can't count on anything and i said you can count on our shared purpose mm. that's what you can count on you can count on that you can count on that the spirit has brought you here and with that, yes, move in, move in, move into the moment, you know, because that's what we practice here. We're mm. really off the linear timeline, really like coming very, very devotedly right down into this present moment where everything is so joined and so beautiful. Because forgiveness is everything that we forgiveness want. Forgiveness is everything. Yeah. It gives yeah. us everything that we want. So what I would say is that as you're uh, studying and practicing, mm. really, you know, uh, and like I was talking about the two phases of the Course in Miracles, in the first phase, you know, perhaps you're doing the lessons and you're studying it and so on and so forth. And then you hit that spiritual ceiling, mm -hmm. which I think we've all hit that mm -hmm. have come here. We hit a spiritual ceiling that you no longer feel like it's working, you know? It's like, what happened? <laughs> I was so inspired. And, but, but we keep going at it, right? Like, okay, if I just forgive more, if I just do this more. And it's like, oh, there's, there's a second phase, all right. And that phase is when you have to get very, very committed and very, very serious about thy will be done. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done, not my will. And you let go of thinking that you know what your will is. I am the queen of that. I thought I knew. I mm -hmm. thought I knew. Until it got so painful. And still saying, I still, you know, ringing the bell of, it's just an illusion, Suzanne. It's just an illusion. Just, you know, go to God, go to God. And it was like, oh my God. And then things just kept getting, you know, like completely outrageous. And then finally it was, okay. Hmm. I, and I saw, I had an idea. I'm going to have this house with this person who's going to support me. I'm going to have this environment. I'm going to have this, you know, it was just, it was all sincere. Hmm. But it was not thy will. Right. It was what I thought, you know, and the ego has inspiration, people, believe me. The <laughs> ego has inspira has its own inspiration. And that's another thing that, that goes while living in this ashram type vibe is personal inspiration. You get a good mm. look at what that's where that can take you. Mm. So it's yeah, it's it's like there's so much offered once, mm. you know. Once the call is there, boom, once the answer, you say, okay, I'm going to answer this call, and I don't know, mm. I don't know, then the spirit can come in and start to write on the blank sheet of paper. 
The tabula rasa. The tabula rasa. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, and speaking of which, the tabula rasa mystery school. Oh my yeah. God, there you go. I mean, great that. if you've hit a wall. Absolutely wonderful if you've really gotten to that point where your devotion is high, but it's not matching the pr old practices, perhaps right. that you've instilled right. for yourself. Right. It does not you know, mean you have to go to another. And you know what? I like that you bring that up yeah. because you know Jesus even, even talks about rungs of a ladder. Mm. Do you know that something that's worked for you and it's not working anymore? It's okay. Yeah. My God, it, it's not supposed to. It's like it's it, it's we're forever deepening in this experience of going into the abstract love of God. And if you've hit a ceiling, it's because there's something that is, is in the mind, it's a choice, that you may be perhaps not, at, maybe it's out of awareness, mm -hmm. you're not aware of it, but you ask the Spirit, make it clear to me, and it will be made clear what the next step is. What the, and then that rung underneath you, it is no longer helpful. Right. It's no longer, you don't even need to pay attention to it anymore. It's like, okay, enough of that. Enough of meditating in, in the desert, Suzanne. Okay, now do I still get to meditate sometimes in the desert? Yes, I do. But it's yeah. like, it's not like I'm clinging on to some practice that was helpful to me and then it began to feel like almost like, an, like a sweater that no longer fits. It's like, oh, something's not right here, but we keep trying to make it work, like relationships, you know? Instead of like just going with the flow, of where the spirit is wanting to take you, we cling. Mm -hmm. You know, the ego clings. It's 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 nature to cling onto whatever whatever will keep it in place. And this is all about displacing the lie mm -hmm. and allowing the truth and the light to come in. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot of that is allowing the spirit to replace the container with what's the kind of container that's mm -hmm. most helpful right now. That's it. And it's it's it may even look just as lovely, it may even look similar to what you would have chosen for yourself. Mm -hmm. But but with this like thy will, the spirit giving it mm -hmm. and whatever that is for anyone watching, by the spirit giving it, it's it's all set up purely for forgiveness. Yeah. And don't think for five seconds that there won't be resistance along the way. Yeah. You know, Jesus says, which is one of my favorite parts of the course, I think it's an epilogue, about doubt. You know, like people always say, can I, you know, how do I know I'm hearing the Holy Spirit? Well, if you feel an inspiration well up in you and then you have all sorts of things coming on top of it, that's the ego just trying to put the spark out. Because mm -hmm. the, the ego will use, not the ego, the spirit will use attraction. The ego will use attraction too, but that's <laughs> another subject. But the, the spirit will, does use, it uses yeah. attraction. Now, I've always had an attraction to things like, like a, a deep spiritual life, like a monastery. Mm -hmm. Well, my gosh, you know, look what happened. I'm surrounded in it now. I'm, I'm literally everywhere I look is that. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's that kind of devotion. It's these kinds of questions. I don't sit around and talk about meaningless things in the world or how to get ahead or any of those things. It's like, my mind is so beautiful. It's like, look, look what's happening this morning. Mm -hmm. We're sitting here in this beautiful space and and just being able to, to share from our heart mm. what we've been through. I'm not a teacher, you know, yeah. I'm not a student. I'm just a devoted one, you know, that's how I feel. And if anything I have to say or share helps you, then beautiful, I'm happy to show up. You know, the questions are welcome, the questions are so welcome, mm. you know, because then we can share with you, hey, there is, you know, like, and that's what I had. I had people who had walked before me, and I never idolized David Hoffmeister. Mm -hmm. I saw David as, oh my God, in my mind, clarity is here. Clair it's my thought. Mm -hmm. It's not outside of me. This is not some worshiping of David Hoffmeister. This is a deep realization that that clarity is in my mind. And it's speaking, and it's saying, it's time. It's time now to and come And that's home. the kind of mirror you'd like. Who oh wouldn't want that as a mirror? Yeah. I mean, that's what's on offer is and come I, to those who are devoted in mirroring to you what's true. Yeah. And um, I, I always misquote the Course, but something about those who are devoted are worthy of devotion. Mm -hmm. And I have felt that in my heart, like over the years of just so incredibly grateful. But I always see it as a reflection of my prayer. Mm. I don't see it as outside of me. You know, it's like this is me showing up because my prayer is pure. I don't want the world anymore. I don't want it. Mm. It's like and it's not a it's not a, like a, a some sort of strange denial. 
it's like I am so fully present now in this seeming world where before I was trying to escape it. I was definitely trying to escape it. There's definitely a difference. There is a huge difference. Now it's like the presence, it's like, oh, how beautiful, you know. I mean, I used to not want to enjoy a sunset because I thought it's an illusion, it's a distraction. I mean, (laughs) and I know that people have these ideas Mm -hmm. and I've walked through them and so I'm so happy to just share anything that's helpful because there's these little traps and these loops you get in, like I need do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, that is a very high level of mind training mm-hmm. to ha- actually have the experience of I need do nothing. Mm-hmm. And then people, they get in a loop with that, like they don't need to do anything, they don't need to go anywhere, they don't need to, you know, be with their brothers and sisters. Just open up to what the Spirit is offering you, no matter what it might look like. Mm. Because it's not going to look like what your ego filter is trying to keep away. I actually think that's what the Tabula Rasa Mystery School is primarily mm. for. It's a 30-day immersion yeah. in an experience. And when I hear the word, you know, immersion, I, I, oh, and I it's residential, immersion. but I hear the word, I always think of divers going deep, and they <laughs> need to be acclimatized yeah. as they go deeper. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's literally uh, uh, just to, to allow you to keep... De- yeah. you know decompressing it so you can just allow yourself to go deeper right, right. you know in a, in, a, in a constructive way and mm-hmm. yet actually to open you up into that unknown open experience yeah the mystery school is for those of you that you don't know um, and we'll put links and stuff down below on anything that happens to come up because it's coming up for a reason <laughs> you know these things that you are there the questions are being asked and and the spirit is weaving it so the mystery school is so amazing it's going to be at the monastery for one month mm-hmm. and it's a total immersion into the depths of what the the course of miracles is is pointing to it's a living experience we are not interested in studying the Course in Miracles. This is not for, uh, you know, the first steps of a student. This is for people who have actually been mm-hmm. in immer- in their own immersion, in their own uh, practice of forgiveness, and feeling like they want to go deeper. That's what the Mystery School is for. Retreats, on the other hand, they're for people who are just like, they're wanting to process through some of the stuff and they're wanting to, you know, they're taking their steps in their devoted way and this is a way to to see how the mirroring of relationship works in our retreats anyway, yes because yes. we do expression sessions and things like that but there's lots of different ways to come in but i'm glad you brought up the mystery school because it's happening in in uh, the whole month of may yes may and first. a beautiful time out at the monastery and there will be it, it will be a full-on immersion yeah. and we're just now it's coming it's coming to us now of what it's about and we're going to be posting and we're going to be sharing more and more about that. Yeah, I think if you've come from a non-dual path, which of course in Miracles is a non-dual yes, path, it is. just referring to our ashram question earlier, um, and perhaps you have been someone who's who's been dropped naturally by the Spirit into great devotion and, and, and has, has a desire though to practically apply it yes. to your life and maybe you're only a new Course in Miracles student, but you have this extensive mm-hmm. background mm-hmm. already of yeah. going to places like Asha. This is for you. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is for you. Yeah. This is this is the way of, of, you know, centering down into one particular path that will take you the whole way because mm-hmm. that's what's vital. Yeah. yeah. And this 30 days, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's nondualityonline.com. Mm-hmm. Just you want to check that one out. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's very beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's really about the application and and the application of forgiveness is not that's just an illusion. That's not it. <laughs> or it's just what's Or I happening. would have been awake a long time ago as I said it over and over. But the, the, the positive affirmations and things, uh, that's what can happen with the course. And with course students, they can get in a loop of, I am not a body, I'm a free. And they, they can do these affirmation type things. But this, what, we, what, what we're about is really the experience and the application in a very, very practical way. Where are the judgments in the mind? How do I actually apply forgiveness? How do I start to open up to, to hear my inner guide, my inner teacher? And so all of this is given and, and people are continually asking us how, 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 how. Mm-hmm. And this really is the how. I mean, and, and it's so simple and it's so beautiful. And, you know, there's all kinds of ideas about community and, you know, is it a cult and all of that stuff. And I can just tell you that it's like, no, no. This is like, that's it. That, the, the, the world is the cult. Well, that's the and Maya. We're, yeah. And we're coming out of that into the freedom 
the absolute freedom of mind. This is important. Not the enslavement of mind. We're coming mm -hmm. out of the enslavement. And so if you hear these things, it's like just be very, very prayerful. Like, okay, I hear that, you know, I hear that, but mm -hmm. what is it that keeps drawing me towards something, you know, and then pay attention to those promptings because you are being guided. Mm. I think for a, a, just a, a soft and gentle um, taste, there's that ACM Easter conference that's happening in Utah, just down mm -hmm. the road from us here next year, and we're having this going deeper retreat at the monastery. And what I like about that is that there'll have been people together during that retreat, that um, conference, conference mm -hmm. and then coming out to the monastery. You know, it's mm -hmm. just an hour away, dropping mm -hmm. into it's the mind. It's kind of symbolic, really. Yeah. That whole thing is symbolic of of the question. Actually, it's like okay, there's. There's the conference, which has many different teachers, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're absorbing, 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 listening, listening, having whatever experience you're having, mm -hmm. and then, and then, it's called going deeper. It's a, it's a going deeper retreat. Yeah, it's called going deeper. Yeah. And so if you have that call, like, oh my gosh, I just want to go and have that, that monastic experience with the Course in Miracles as the foundation, and after that weekend, just coming and falling deeper and deeper into the experience because the place itself supports the experience. It, it does support the experience, which also is just a mirror of your own mind wanting a deeper experience. There's nothing, there's no place, there's no sacred places, there, none of that, but there's some sort of devotion and dedication to this symbol, not to the symbol, but front, the, you know, that's a reflection of our mind of wanting that depth. And it's like a spa for the mind. When you go to the spa, you know what you're going into for. And when you come to the monastery, you can feel it. Yeah. You feel, like you said, that blank, soft blanket around mm -hmm. you. And this is just three days, like from the yeah. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, yeah. going home on Wednesday. Yeah. And just, and all those glinting eyes of those going with yeah. you, you yeah. know, that support of the same devotion. Yeah. So do you feel like we've answered this question? I think, I think <laughs> this is... I don't know if there's any, I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> yeah. So I think there was the, the aspect of like, you know, I'm attracted to this ashram idea. Right. So you covered like okay. that, that it's service and devotion yes. and that that's, that's definitely mm -hmm. available using A Course in Miracles. Yeah, so you don't I, have to switch I, pathways. I, yeah, I like to say that that attraction, <laughs> attraction. that yeah. attraction to the ashram, but knowing that that ashram is not really t your path. Yeah. It's like, but that attraction, follow that attraction. Mm. Follow that attraction. And see, you ask the question, mm. and it's like, boom, here's the answer. Yes, we have devotional stays, mm -hmm. which we're very, very open to right now, is having people come. There's applications online. Mm -hmm. um, Nicholas can put it up. Um, it's for, a dear, you know, for varying lengths of time, and we join about what's most supportive for you. But it's where you can actually come into the community outside of a... Uh, say a, a, a retreat or, yeah. or, or a devotional uh, retreat or uh, the mystery school. Yeah. Like this is like a you can come like regular in, time. Yeah, and you just come and live in community with us, and it is about that devotion. So that's another way to come in yeah. as well. Yeah, and um, yeah, highly encourage it. It's like if, and the thing is, is you don't really have to think about it. You can feel it. You know, if these words are resonating in your heart, then don't ignore it. Yeah. Don't ignore it. It's like, if you ignore it, then you'll just continually hit that ceiling that doesn't, you never go past the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And because, yeah, there's fear. Oh, God, you know, I don't want to go, you know, live in a community with people, for, even if it's for a couple of weeks, because of this and this and this and this. Well, this and this and this and this is what's keeping you from the vibrancy right. of the spirit. Right. And believe you me, I understand. I had many of them. And I do think it's helpful to share that most of us were naturally more hermits. Yes, we were. Um, so um, if, if your thought is, I'm not really good with people or something, it's like, that's really okay. Or because, it's just a self-study. Yeah, it's just a self-study, and that's why I'm not going near people. But it's just, it's really this, you, we go together, you and I, is, yes. is the statement hand in the in course. Hand. hand in hand. You don't go home without your brother. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't like that very much, but now I see it. I tried to really yeah, hard. I know. Most people, most people that you know that came together many years ago, it was like a constellation of devoted minds and hearts came together, and it was like, 
I think almost every single one of us, <laughs> we didn't have no. any intention of any of this. <laughs> Community was not a word in our vocabulary right. at all. And now it's a retranslated. Mm -hmm. It's a retranslated word in our. It's a and it's it's a living experience. It's. It's like, okay, I have no idea what the day is going to bring. Mm -hmm. I have no idea that I will be done. You know, if I can be used, use me. If I can sit, I'll sit. Whatever it is, it's just, it's like there's a calmness in the mind now. There's a, a serenity in the mind mm -hmm. now. And there's not a trying to escape the world in the mind now, which was a huge loop for me. We could have a whole show about that. Yeah. So, that, yeah. Actually. So this is beautiful <laughs> just to be able to share how much the Spirit loves you, how much is offered, um, and uh, to just, like, just to be aware, just to be aware if you feel a tickle, you know, David always says, follow the tickle, follow the tickle, you know, and then notice how when you start to follow the tickle, the mind, the ego mind will come in and try to crash it. It's yeah. just its job, it's its job, you know. But we well, we, we're we very practical, so we love we love using audio-visual multimedia. Mm -hmm. And there are beautiful videos that we've made, even if you go to miracles-monastery.org, that give you the feeling of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's something so reassuring about just watching yeah. others go through it, or in a video, yeah. or music. Yeah. So. yeah, and any questions that you have, please do write in with the questions, and we will address them, and we're happy to. So, yeah. Thank you so much. It feels, it feels beautiful. beautiful. Thank yeah. you for joining me in front yeah. of this fire. Yeah. Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Thank you. Lots of love. <laughs>